Hello and welcome to Q Sports. I am Mumudu Gajaga and thank you very much for joining me. Coming up tonight, it's exactly 10 days before the World Cup begins in Russia. The Gambia is not represented as a country, but individually two people will be part of the World Cup in different ways. And we will tell you who these two people are and what are going to be their roles in the Football World Cup in Russia 2018. The Gambia under 23 team beat Morocco in their second friendly international which was held on Friday at the Independence Stadium and we will bring you up to date of some of the highlights of the game as well. Cricket will also be part of our agenda tonight on Q Sports. Q Sports. Q Sports. Welcome back. You are just watching Q Sports if you're just tuning in. And as we introduce, we are going to begin our show with the Football World Cup. Let's begin the show with refereeing at the World Cup in Russia 2018. 36 referees will be taking part in the officiating of the Global Soul Peace event. And among the 36 referees, there is three-time African best referee, Bakri Papa Gassama, who will be taking charge in one of the matches. And we followed Bakari Papa Gassama just before he bids farewell to the Gambia to go to Russia. We're standing here right at the Universal Fitness Gym around the Busubi roundabout area where referee Bakari Papa Gassama of the Gambia, who is among 36 referees selected by the World Football Governing Body to officiate in the Russia 2018 World Cup, where he is training at the moment. You could see him training you know, using all kinds of equipment to make sure that he maintains his fitness level before the World Cup get underway in Russia in just under two weeks. We will follow his training and we will talk to him to ask about his level of preparation before the Football World Cup in Russia. Thank you very much, my brother. As you can see, the preparation is on high years. I'll be leaving tomorrow, but uh, nonetheless, I have to train because I know traveling for two days. And I will not be training, so I have to say, let me train so that um, my preparation, the hard preparation continues. Yeah. This is your second World Cup as far as officiating at the FIFA level is concerned. How do you feel? Um, I am very happy um, because Gambian name will be mentioned for the second time. Not only me, it's the Gambia. As I always say, Papa is a Gambian. Wherever I go, whatever I do, to bring good name for the Gambia, I have to do. And I'm very happy and proud to be Gambian because Gambian name will be mentioned in the World Cup again for the second time in a row. The consistency has to be based on two things. Um, hard training and um, to prepare yourself in all aspects of the game as, as far as refereeing is concerned. If not a full professional, at least to be a semi-professional. You have to train hard, read your loss of the game, watch in many games, and to know that um, refereeing now is very demanding. So for that being the case, um, you have to keep going and um, you train hard to be a professional. Now let's talk about technology in the game. Now we have what we call VAR, Video Assistant Referee, who would be helping you when there are big decisions to be made, whether the ball has crossed the line, whether there is a penalty, is it a handball or is it not a handball, those debating moments. Uh, as a referee, uh, are you up to task to meet these demands whenever it arises as far as you are officiating in a game? Yes, um, thank God I am the first African referee to do this VAR. Um, I was in the World Club in Japan 2016. I represented um, Africa there to be VAR. Um, from there, I also did um, um, as a referee where VAR was part of the game. That was in um, the last Confederation Cup in Russia. And we have done so many seminars with uh, the implement implementation of the VAR and also with CAF. We are not left behind. Kafi doing his own more best to, for us to be, you know, in the modern game that is officiating with the VAR. Um, 
we have got an experience now. And um, this VAR is really helpful for the referees. Because um, I can say, if not in all competitions, most of the competition, uh, one or two referees made a big mistake. But now, with the, with the help of the new technology, that thing will not happen again. Because in every major decision now, the referee will be you know, instructed by the VAR to stop the game. And the VAR will check, check not once, not twice, to tell you exactly what happens. So this new technology is really helpful for, 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 for the referees. Um, for me, um, I will not say I have um, many experience with the VAR, but I am really comfortable with it now, as of now, yes. Now Papa is training in the Ramadan, fasting and training at the same time. How would you describe this? How difficult is it? Very difficult, very difficult, Kajaga, because um, training two times in the afternoon and in the month of Ramadan, that is from half past four at the field and then, then coming here for another extra training with my brother and uh, friend, Mr. Sonko, for, for one hour again, it's very difficult. But as I said before, life is all about challenging. Nobody forced me to be a referee. I have to take up to the, the challenge. So I have to prepare myself. We, um, we have more than 1,000 international referees, FIFA referees. If 36 is selected, you have to do your best to, 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 to be fit. So that's why it is very difficult, yes. But I have to train hard to be at the top. Yeah. At some point in your life, referees at the age of 45, most of them retire. Yeah. After retirement, what is Papa going to look forward to? Um, as of now, um, many journalists are, not even you, international, they are very concerned about this question. But um, also, I'm concentrating on my career now. Um, Maybe in the next two or three years, I will decide what to do. But as of now, especially today, I'm really focusing on the World Cup. After the World Cup, then I will see also um, uh, what to do uh, with the advice of FIFA and CAF. Uh, I will see what to do. I will see what to do. As of now, I do not decide yet. But anything can happen. Anything can happen, yes. Papa, finally, has there been any football game that you officiated in where you got tired? There is a period, the game is so fast that you cannot go anymore. Um, not anymore, but I can remember a few games that I was very, very tired. Um, like um, Bayern Munich Guangzhou 2013 World Club Cup in Morocco. My heart rate was 198 to 200. I was really tired because with the like of Aaron Robin on the left, Ribery on the right, you know. And it was my first game officiating um, a European club. You know, I was doing my best uh, to be everywhere. On that game, I can remember I was really, really, really tired. But not to the extent of I cannot go. No, no, not to the extent of I can go. That's why. As you asked before, training now for refereeing is paramount. I can just describe him in a nutshell. He believes in what he's doing. So, and that's the secret behind his success. And he is always listening. Because being a sportsman, having a coach or a trainer, you need to listen to the coach or the trainer and do it exactly or at least very close to what you are being told to do. And you take it seriously. And that's all what he does. How is the relationship between you and Papa, that um, trainer and athlete relationship? The trainer and athlete relationship, I could just tell you, he's a brother to me now, not even a trainer, because we do a lot of things together outside training. We even have a small, like you call it a food, that I sit with him here outside the gym every Saturday. So virtually, he's now even a very good friend of mine, a very good junior brother. So maybe that's why even the training programs too are going well because we are too connected now.